Hey, what's up, family? Hey, today I'm just have a little bit of fun going down memory lane with this video here. A lot of y'all gonna be familiar with. And this one, I'm gonna title it Riddles. And what I mean by that, a lot of times as kids, a lot of our parents would indirectly say something to us and they would say it like in a riddle form and we had to figure it out. A lot of times we was confused. And sometimes you didn't figure it out, you got your butt whooped. You know what I mean? It would be simple, so I'm gonna get right to it, for example. It'd be stuff like this. I remember as a kid, you know, family be watching TV or something. And I remember my aunt would say something to me along the lines like this. Lil' Junior, is your, is your father a glass maker? And as a kid, I'm like, what? Is it? I said, is your father a glass maker? And obviously my answer would be no. So I'd be like, no. And then it, I apologize for this. I'm, I'm a cuss this. I'm going to say exactly how it was said to me. So I would say no, and then her response would be, "Well, get from in front of the damn TV because can't nobody see and can't nobody see through your ass." So I'm like, "What? Why couldn't she just say move? What? What the heck? You know?" What I'm saying? So these are the type of reels we was dealing with all the time. It's like, "Was your father a glassmaker?" So get from in front of the damn TV because I can't see through you. All right, another one, another common one I remember. Get ready to go outside to play or something, and then my aunt would yell back and be like, "Lo, join him." Come back here. Come back here. Was you raised in a damn barn? I'm, once again, I'm like, uh, no. Well, shut the damn door because you're letting all the cold, letting all the heat out. I'm like, what the heck? Why couldn't you just say shut the door? What's with these constant riddles? You know what I mean? And this is stuff that messed you up as a kid, but you, you learn to be swift. You swiftly caught on to the game. If you didn't, you got your butt whipped, you know. So you swiftly caught on swift. That would be the word of the day. Swift meaning quick. You start to catch on because you got tired of getting popped upside the head or butt whooping. I remember another one. A lot of y'all gonna get. To, I'm gonna get to the main one that a lot of y'all know at the end of the video. I'm gonna make it short, but y'all gonna know. Uh, how about this one? Don't make me repeat myself. Now as a kid, you learn real quick. Don't make it repeat itself. And if you ask something again after she told you once, it was pop. Didn't I tell you? Don't make me repeat myself. So you learn. That kind of reminds me. Remember the movie Norbit? The part where Rush Busha got in the car and Norbit was on the passenger side. And then she said, And I told you, stop moving up my seat. Every time I get in here, you ain't moving up my seat. And Norbit was like, I did not move up your seat, Rush Busha. She's like, You did too. Don't look. Don't make me say it again. I ain't going to say it again. This The conversation's over. Don't, I want to hear another word of it. I want to hear another word of it. And then he said one other word. She was like, Pop. He slapped the mess out of him. I don't make me repeat myself. Yo, so that was just funny. It was another one, because I remember I wrote this down over there. Uh, oh, acting or telling. Oh, I remember this one. <laughs> I remember as a kid, another thing about going outside, trying to figure out these doggone riddles. Just couldn't figure them out sometimes, but you learn swiftly that you better get quick with them. I remember one time I finished my homework, cleaned up the bedroom, did everything right according to what I thought was everything right. And right after I seen all my friends across the street at the playground, so I couldn't wait to finish my homework and clean the room so I could go outside and play with my friends. And then I remember, I, as I was getting ready to go outside, I, I said to my aunt, I said, hey, I, I'm, I'm going outside to play. And she said, hold on, hold on, hold on. wait, wait one minute right there. Now, what, 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 what did you say to me again? I said, I said, I'm going outside to play. <laughs> and then she said, now, hold on a second. Are you asking me or are you telling me you going outside to play? And I was like, once again, as a kid, I was like, um, in my mind, I'm saying, well, I cleaned my room. I did my homework. I'm telling you I'm going outside to play. And she's like, oh, oh, so you pay bills around this damn place, huh? You know what? Get your ass in the room. You ain't going outside to play now since you telling me what you going to do. Yo, I really was confused. Like, what the heck did I do wrong? But you see what I'm saying? That's what I mean by swiftly. You had to learn how to catch on to these things as a kid. So now I'm in the room. My aunt, she was real pleasant. And every other five minutes, she keep coming in the room checking on me. Because I knew she was going to give me another chance. But the whole time I'm in the room, I'm like, what did I say wrong? I know I had two options. She says, you asking me or telling me? And mm -hmm. obviously, I said, I'm telling her. And that was one of the right thing. So I guess when she asked again, I'm going to say, I'm asking you. So when she, about 20 minutes later, she came back and she said, now I'm going to ask you one more time. Now, what did you say to me? What did you want to say to me? Was you asking me or telling me? So this time I said, uh, I'm 
asking you? And she's like, okay, now what do you mean? What, what's the difference? So you asked me and tell me. I really didn't know what to say. I was like, what a typical kid would say. I was like, mm hmm. <laughs> and she's just like, can't take your butt outside, boy. Don't be, you don't pay no damn bills right here. You talking about you telling me. Yo, how about this one? We all remember this one here too. Oh boy, I'm gonna give you something to cry for. You know, we all know what that one was. That was all the time when some kid was overdoing it with the crime when they got hurt or they got popped or whatever. And now the mother or father got tired of them crying. Most times the mother got tired of making noise. They're like, keep on crying. Keep on crying. I'm going to give you something to cry for. <laughs> Next, you know, that led to a butt whooping. Matter of fact, I remember one of my other uh, aunts in New Brunswick. I remember my cousin hit his shin on the table and he was hurting like crazy. And he was just making all this noise, making all this noise, like, oh, it's all crazy. Man, they used to do silly stuff to us. And I remember she said, come here, let me see. Boy, you all been doing all this crap? Let me see, let me see, let me see. And when he got close to her, she pinched his arm real hard. And he went from holding his leg to when she pinched his arm, he was like, oh, 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 oh. She's like, oh, I guess your leg don't hurt no more, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but see, once again, these are all the little silly stuff we went through. I remember... Before my mother had passed away, I remember my mother used to tell like my older brother and stuff like, you know, because I was the youngest of, of, of six kids that my mother had. I was the youngest. So I remember my mother used to tell like my older brother or something like that. Take a little junior with you and you better not let your little brother get hurt. You know how good that felt as a kid? Because I figured that one out. That meant that I had to hang with him, which I wanted to hang with my older brother. But they had to let me in on everything they did. And I, I heard my mother say, and he better not get hurt. Otherwise, I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> that was a good feeling to be with your brothers all the time and, and know that you had a shelter over you from mommy from a long distance. <laughs> all right. Uh, what was another? All right. I'm going to get to the main one that a lot of y'all know out there. And everyone know this one. When you was cutting up, one of the most common thing your parents would say to you. You know what? Keep it up. A hard head makes a soft ass. <laughs> and if you didn't get that quick enough, before you know it, you was getting a beating. Because it's like, you can't be a hard head, you're going to get a soft ass. Other people would say something like, boy, are you cruising for a bruising? You know, which meant the same thing. And it made it even more funnier if you happen to be over one of your friend's house and you heard their parents say the same thing that was said to you at your house. Like, boy, I told you to take that garbage out. You know, a hard head going to make a soft ass. And you, you owe your friends out. You heard your, your mother, you heard your friends' parents say that to them. You started cracking up because you knew what that meant. You was like, boy, you better take that garbage out because she's about to tear you up. <laughs> you knew. So, hey, like I said, I just wanted to have a little humor today and make a little funny video that a lot of y'all can relate to. Um, so, on that note, subscribe, share, like, and comment. Hey, what was some of the old things parents said to you? And I, or, or some of the ones that I said, I know you're familiar with or got your butt whipped. So hit me up with a comment and let me know what were some of the funny things that parents said to you that you had to think, oh my gosh, I got to think on my toes real quick. I'm going to get it in trouble. <laughs> on that note, I'm going to let y'all go. Peace.